if you're going to sit around and wait for opportunity to knock, you may miss it. It may be knocking right now and you don't see it. So just go for it. Build your own door. Don't make any excuses. This is The Entrepreneur Way with Neil Ball. And now, here is your host, Neil Ball. Hello, it's Neil Ball here. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Entrepreneur Way. The Entrepreneur Way is about the entrepreneur's journey, the vision, the mindset, the commitment, the sacrifice, failures and successes. I am so excited to bring you our special guest today, Melissa Jakubovic. But before I introduce you to Melissa, I have a quote for you by Arthur Block. Every classification breeds new questions. The entrepreneur way asks the questions so we all get the insights, inspiration and ideas to apply in our businesses. Melissa, welcome to the show. Are you ready to share your version of the entrepreneur way with us? Let's do it. Thank you very much for coming on the show today, Melissa. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. You are welcome. Melissa Jakubovic is a Facebook ads expert and marketing specialist. She is a self-proclaimed serial entrepreneur and a hustler full of passion. Her ad agency, Melissa Marketing, helps businesses and entrepreneurs put their product or service in front of the right client or customer so they can scale their business strategically and spend time doing what they love to do. As a single mom of two boys, it is incredibly important for Melissa to use her time efficiently and effectively. And that's why she is determined to get shit done for her clients. Melissa is an extreme hard worker and loves to help people achieve their goals. Problem solving and resourcefulness are some of her best qualities. She attributes her success to being an entrepreneur herself and her love of learning new systems and strategies. Melissa believes that the learning and creative process never ends. Melissa, can you provide us with some more insight into your business and personal life to allow us to get to know more about who you are and what you do? Well, I own a Facebook ads agency and I help businesses and entrepreneurs put their product or service in front of the right client or customers. They can scale their business strategically and then spend time doing what they love to do. So basically we do everything like developing, designing, creating and mapping out your funnel strategy, copywriting, content creation, managing social platforms, video, and of course, all things Facebook. And that really started in the third grade for me when I started selling friendship bracelets on the playground. And since then, I've been an entrepreneur and it is just my passion to be creative and focus my energy on projects and problem solve and and really bring everything together, all the different aspects that you need to launch something. And I love doing that for other people. So that's basically what we do. Mm-hmm. So it started with friendship bracelets on the in the playground. How did your journey progress after that? Did you ever get a job or have you always been an entrepreneur? I've always been an entrepreneur and I had a job. <laughs> so a lot of times people who are really passionate about becoming an entrepreneur, they're stuck in their 40 hour, 50 hour, 60 hour a week jobs, slowly building on the side. And I kind of did it opposite to that. I had my own business all the time since I was a sophomore in high school. So since I was 15 and if things got tough, I'd pick up a side job that I knew I'd have an income flowing in with the paychecks there, always putting my entrepreneur self before the 
40 hour work day working for someone else, but I always made it work. Mm -hmm. And did you always feel that you were going to have your own? Absolutely felt that my strengths would be better used in my own environment. And I've tested this a few times. I worked in an insurance company for six months and it was absolute torture getting up early, dressing up fancy, constantly talking to hundreds of people in a company being pulled from one direction to the other and doing exactly what you're told to do just because. And I'm such a creative free spirit that there's so much more value I can offer to the world if I can just use my passions and do something with them. So that's the direction I went in. Mm, when you put it like that, I just think to myself, I, I couldn't do that. I don't think I'm employable. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't really like me too much. <laughs> <laughs> what do you enjoy most about what you do? Absolutely the freedom. Mm -hmm. um, just being on my own time schedule. I love to work in the morning. I love to work late at night. I'm most creative between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. And I love spelling, spending quality time with my kids. They are the, the reason why I do what I do. But I was even doing this before I had them. So I know I'm definitely in the right path for myself. It's definitely a good fit for me. But having that quality time with my kids, being able to manage my home, like do laundry, make homemade healthy meals for them, play with them. It's just, that's why I became a mom to be with them. So here I get the best of both worlds and it's on my own time schedule. So how, how did you end up setting up your business Facebook ad, with for Facebook ads and, and your Facebook ads agency? Well, first of all, in college, I was a sociology major and a theater major, and I love the study of people. I love being able to follow trends of what people like to do and come up with some sort of system to lead them in one direction or another. So I've always really been excited about that. And I think that's what sparked my interest. But prior to that, I have another online business. It's the health and life coaching company. And I was able to grow that business from the ground up using social media marketing. And I saw the power of it. And eventually it just scaled and got so big that a bunch of my friends who are also entrepreneurs got really excited for me and said, oh my gosh, can you do that for our business? So I played around, I dabbled a little bit with their businesses and they saw a lot of success in it and they were like, you need to do this full time, blah, blah, blah. So I started teaching myself and diving into trainings till I became really, really good at it. And now that's the focus to run Facebook advertising for other companies and help them out. So what's, what, can you give us a, a secret to making a Facebook ad actually work? Because I I'm sure there's lots of people who probably try it and don't get any joy out of it. Well, yeah, if people are using social media and they're not seeing the results that they want, mm -hmm. then they're probably not sticking to the formula where you need three things to make a successful Facebook ad, which is a sexy offer killer ad copy and you must target the right audience for that product or service. And that's what people are messing up on a lot of times. They're saying, I cater to everybody. My product is good for everyone. And that's their biggest mistake. So you really need to find out who is your ideal client or customer and then speak directly to them. Like they're the, sitting in the room with you. And when you do that, you'll be able to really see a return on your investment with your Facebook advertising. And you also want to make sure that you're putting an offer out there that really appeals to that client. So if you're trying to speak to stay at home moms and you're selling them motorcycle engines, then obviously that's not going to work. But if you're talking to stay at home moms about like organic food or something that might make more sense about feeding your child organically or holistically. So you just really need to make sure that you're connecting the dots. And also clicking on that Facebook ad is the front end. And a lot of businesses aren't worried about their back end infrastructure. And that is the key. They need to have a sales funnel in place so that once that client or that prospect clicks on that Facebook ad, they're going to something that you're directing them to. What drives you to do what you do? 
Gosh, I just love seeing my passions turn into my projects. And I love seeing my projects come to life. I, I love knowing that what I'm doing makes a difference and I love helping other people and I strive every day to be better than I was the day before. How do you relax when you're not working in your business? I love to read personal development books and also fiction novels and I love to dance. It's my favorite thing. I meditate. I do yoga. I love to work out and I love to go on family adventures spend time with them. Do you have any entrepreneurial role models? My dad, for sure. He's, he's always worked from home and he just always made it work for us. So I've seen him through the ups and the downs that all entrepreneurs have. And even this past year, when um, he's gone through six major surgeries, he always packed his laptop with him for his hospital stay and he just made it happen. So I'm really fortunate to have seen his whole progression and learn how to overcome those falls, which are going to happen when you're an entrepreneur. Melissa, what I'd like to do now is talk about the time before you were an entrepreneur. I'm not quite sure where we'll go with this because by the sounds of things, you started very young. <laughs> <laughs> But maybe you could focus on one of your more recent businesses. Sure. What difficulties did you have to overcome when you started your business? Well, um, I was broke poor, for one. I was a single mom. I still am a single mom. I had just gotten out of an abusive relationship. And I was down to zero, ground zero, as they say. There was just nothing left except a belief. So I was determined to start over and I put all of my profits back into the business because I felt so strongly about what I was building that I knew that if I did that, it could only grow and grow and grow from there. And that's exactly what happened. Did you have any doubts that delayed you starting your business? Not really. I I believe in myself and I always knew that it would work because I would work. But my doubts wouldn't be like long-term doubts. They'd be more in the moment like, ah, this bill is due. What am I going to do? But the thing with money is it's just energy and it flows to you. So if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing to move your business forward and you really believe in what you're doing, and I'm a true believer of ask, believe, and receive. So when you ask for something, that would be like, I want my business to succeed or it could be more spe- more specific. I want my business to make 10,000 a, a month or 20,000 a month or whatever it is and you ask for it, then you have to actually believe that it's coming to you. And that's what I did and I wrote down goals every day about what it is that I wanted to achieve as if I had already achieved them and then it came to me. So in that moment where, you know, the bill has to be paid and you ha- you're left with nothing, if you just think about all these different ways that you could make money and be extremely resourceful, it always comes together, falls into place and works out. And it may not work out the way you had intended it to, but it always works out if you keep going. So that's really what I think has brought me to where I am today. So what mistakes did you make that slowed your journey? Probably not hiring help in my business soon enough not building a team fast enough. I have um, a team of nine. And as soon as I hired my team, everything exploded. So, you know, being an entrepreneur, sometimes we think I'm an entrepreneur. I wear all the hats. I need to do everything in my business. But what really ends up happening is you don't have time for anything. You lose focus. You feel worn out. You feel discouraged. Things start to slip through your fingers and They don't work out the way you need them to. So as soon as I built a team, we were all able to implement things much more quickly and grow from there and scale the business. So had I picked up that strategy years ago, I probably would have lifted off much sooner, but everything works out the way it's supposed to. What are some of the things that you did before you started your business that will be helpful tips to some of the listeners who haven't yet taken the first step on the entrepreneur way? Well, I'm self-taught. 
So I listened, I learned, I researched, and I reached out to mentors, people in the business who are already succeeding in what I did and what I wanted. And I didn't wait for it to bite me in the ass. I just chased it. You know, it's like when you believe, you need to just go. And there are no excuses. You need to use your adversity to your advantage. So that's what I did. And I think that if anyone listening wants to be an entrepreneur and knows that they have this fire in their belly, that that's what they need to do, then that's what they need to do. Just make it happen. Melissa, what I'd like to do is talk about the entrepreneurial journey a bit more with you now. Do you think culture is important from the beginning in a business? Oh, absolutely. Like I said, I was a, I'm a sociology major and I love the study of people. I think in business and especially online and online marketing even, it's, it's just all about connecting. It's about building relationships. My company culture is a reflection of who we are and who we strive to be. So we believe in, in great values like recognition, celebration, thinking that you fail when something doesn't work is not going to propel us forward. That is a learning experience. So our culture is always finding the positivity and the teamwork and the hard work and the consistency and really working together to make it happen. And also our company culture includes family. So if somebody needs to stay home with their child because their child is sick or they're going to a special event for their husband or wife, you know, we honor that and give them the flexibility to do that because that's what being an entrepreneur is all about. And I want um, my whole business to feel that we are empowering each other to do what we want to do as opposed to this is how you must do it and that's it. So there's also an element of freedom that I give my employees. And I feel like as a leader of my team, um, I need to lead by example and take off days when I need to and build a schedule on around how I succeed and my strengths. And that's what I try to get my team to do as well. How did you create the bit, the culture in your business at the beginning? Honestly, when I was trying to find the right teammates and I put out some posts to hire some people um, here and there, I put in there exactly what I was looking for. So Right from the get-go, you know, if you're applying for a job to work with me, that you are a good fit before you even start to fill out the paperwork or even try to get an interview. So I say, you know, family is really important to us. Positivity is really in- important to us. Um, working hard and working together as a team is important to us. And therefore, people who are turned off by that won't even apply. And then when people apply to work with me, I show them how these things work in our business and I recognize them and I celebrate their successes and hard work. How do you make sure that you hire the right people so that they fit with the culture in your business? I ask them lots of questions. I like to learn about people. Of course, I do research on them and I also find out what their references say about them. And I give a lot of people Um, a trial, you know, I might have one project and I say, you know, let's see how you do with this project and test out the way we work together and see if we're a good fit. And if we are, then they're on board for the long term. And when they see the vision that I have and they're working just as hard as I am to get something out, I know that they're a good fit because I want people who are like me, who just have tremendous drive and go and go and go until it's done. Knowing what you know now, is there anything that if you'd known it when you started out that would have helped you to shortcut the learning curve? Yeah, like I spoke about before, having a back-end infrastructure is so important. It's such an integral part of every business. It's not just throwing ads up online like your front-end infrastructure or speaking to clients or dealing with payment processing companies, or running a business is more than just putting a a discounted price on your window in your storefront. It's more about mapping out your sales funnels 
and getting customers to enter at certain points in the funnel by targeting specifically to your ideal client. And I would have scaled more quickly had I known that. How much does gut feeling influence your decisions in your business? So, so much. (laughs) We have our intuition for a reason. So listen to it. You know, you need to trust yourself. Don't second guess yourself and just test everything. So if it doesn't work, then change it. But don't say, oh, that's a stupid idea. Just never shut yourself down before you even have the chance to shine because you don't know what will happen. You don't know what the future is and you don't know what will work. You only know what you think you know. So if you have that intuition and it's telling you to do something on a whim, do it. The biggest businesses that have been built in this world were because they followed their dreams. And even when people thought they were crazy, you know, that's their loss. If you have a great idea, then try it because there's no harm in that. What makes you uncomfortable as an entrepreneur? You know, when I was first starting out, I had the passion, I had the drive, I had the hustle. I knew what I had to offer was a great service or product for all of my ideal clients. But the struggle was that sometimes all of the income that I would get would have to go back into the business, paying employees or running my software systems. And if I didn't have that money, the business would be shut down. And what happens then is that you're stuck and you don't have this lavish life and you're not able to buy your kids everything that you want or go everywhere. And so it does make you feel uncomfortable. But the only thing I can say about that is when you get outside of your comfort zone, that's where the magic happens. And things will always work out. So I just kept believing that things are going to work out and I know what I'm doing is the right thing and I know I'm heading in the right direction. So yeah, there are moments of uncomfortability, but they're worth it because not only do they show you what, when you are comfortable, the difference and you can really appreciate and be grateful for that, but it also teaches you how to maybe do things differently, or it makes you feel really good and confident because you struggled through it and you made it through. So it's a good place to be. What do you think are some of the secrets to success? I think the secrets to success are definitely to believe in yourself, to be consistent, to strive to be better every single day, to surround yourself with like-minded people who are already where you see yourself going and to be open-minded. Life is made of constant change, whether we like it or not. And many people say that the only constant in life is change. Melissa, how do you try to keep up with change? I am always learning. I'm a student for life. And I tell that to everyone who asks me because it's, if it's new, I'm on it. If it's hot, I'm doing it. If it's how your business doesn't die, you know, if, if you say, oh, I can't do that. I shouldn't, I shouldn't get involved in social media. Well, all of your competitors are getting involved in social media and soon enough, you will not be here anymore. So change is good. And change is hard, but at the same time, it makes you stronger, it makes you better, and it makes you see things from a different perspective. So if it's scary and that's why you are hesitant to make that change, that's just an excuse. You're operating from a place of fear. And when you operate from a place of fear, you don't reach your highest potential. What is your favorite book on entrepreneurialism, business, personal development, leadership, or motivation? And can you tell us why you have chosen it? I would say You're a Badass by Jen Sincero. That's Mm -hmm. a really amazing book. And what did you get out of that book? That book is just very inspirational and it's, basically telling everything that you know already or that you should know, but you just maybe haven't realized it yet or you needed someone to just say it to you. And when you're done reading that book, you just feel like, huh, I think I had an aha moment and I'm ready to conquer the world. So 
it's very motivational. Folks, when you have a busy life, listening to audiobooks is a great way to expand your knowledge in the time when you may be doing other things, such as driving or when you are at the gym. We have a special offer for you of a free audiobook of your choosing. To choose your free audiobook, go to www.freeaudiobookoffer.com. As long as you've not already signed up, then you will qualify. Melissa, what I'd like to do now is to speculate about the future. What one thing would you do with your business if you knew that you could not fail? I would take my business international and have people translate everything for me in all the languages that I don't speak and help more people far and wide. What skill, if you were excellent at it, would help you the most to double your business? You know, so many people have so many different talents and they should be authentic and use those to their advantage. So some of my strengths are creativity, innovation and resourcefulness. And those are what are working well for me. But what could you work on that would actually double your business? What, what things could you get better at? Oh, gosh, there are so many things I can get better at. Probably mm-hmm. scheduling. Um Hiring more people more quickly. We're about to level up. And, you know, sometimes these things get put on. I think we're slowly expanding and those skills are really important to be able to reach people far and wide and also understand where they're coming from. In five years from now, if a well-known business publication was publishing an article on your business, After talking to your customers and suppliers, what would you like it to say? I'd like it to say how no matter where you are or whatever you want to be with hard work, consistency, resourcefulness, belief and positive self-talk that you can reach everyone. And I wanted to say that I've done just that and that I've reached millions of people to do that and just reach their higher self in life, in health, in business, in all areas of their life. We are now at the part of the show where you share three golden nuggets with us. Melissa, what is your favorite quote and how have you applied it? I have two. (laughs) The first one is, it's not about ideas. It's about making ideas happen by Scott Belsky. And I've applied that because every idea I have, I test, I brainstorm, I write it out, I implement it, and I see what happens. And the second one is, when opportunity doesn't knock, build a door by Milton Berle. Because if you're going to sit around and wait for opportunity to knock, you may miss it. It may be knocking right now and you don't see it. So just go for it. Build your own door. Don't make any excuses. And that's exactly what I did. I had everything working against me, getting out of a really bad relationship, being a single mom, having no money, nowhere to go. And I just made it work. You put the pedal to the metal and you go. And that's how you reach success. Do you have any favorite online resources you could share with us that'd be useful for other entrepreneurs? I love listening to podcasts, like you said, with audiobooks. I think they are so powerful and you can really absorb a lot of information while multitasking, like folding laundry or driving. So I like podcasts like Shalene Johnson and Amy Porterfield. And I also think Facebook ads is a great online resource that has tremendously helped my business, all of my businesses. What is your best advice to other entrepreneurs? You know, you need to organize your life. You need to organize your business. You know, it's so easy to say, I have this and this and this and this and this to do. And then you become so scatterbrained. And if you can just come up with a system and implement it and just repeat it every day, then it might be slow moving. But over time, all those little things that you're doing are going to compound into major success. And Also, like I said, working the front end of your business all the time, it just doesn't work. So that's where you leave money on the table. You want to 
build a back end business, a sales funnel, you want to have a system in place to generate passive income while you innovate, build and scale. And that's what we do. Folks, if you didn't manage to get a note of Melissa's favorite resource or her favorite book, you can find the links on Melissa's show notes page. Just go to the entrepreneurway.com and search for Melissa or Melissa Jakubovic in the search box. Melissa, can you tell us something about your book, please? My book. Well, I've written a life coaching book called Push Positive, Pushing Play on Your Positive Life. And it describes my struggle with overcoming a breakup and gives you actionable tips on how you can flow through life's transitions more easily, whether you got out of a breakup or your business is failing or you've just moved to a new place and you have no friends or someone passed away. So it's a great tool and resource to move through life's transitions gracefully and with ease. Is there anything else that you'd like to add about your business? Absolutely. I think that if you are not on social media marketing yet, you are behind the times and you need to get on it. And one of the first steps that businesses and entrepreneurs need to work on and see is really defining who their ideal client or customer is so that they can specifically target that perfect person to come into their business and be so enthralled with their services or their products. So I have a free guide that I'd like to share with your audience. Mm -hmm. It's called Finding Your Dream Customer Guide. And you can grab that at my website at melissmarketing.com slash dream. Melissa, it really has been an honor having you on the show today. Thank you for coming on and telling us about Melissa Marketing and Facebook Advertising and also sharing some real gems with us like use your adversity to your advantage. What great advice. And beyond that, you've shared your mindset, your attitude, beliefs, philosophy about being an entrepreneur and what it takes to be successful. So thank you very much for coming on the show today. Thank you so much for having me, Neil. It was a blast. You're welcome, Melissa. Thank you.